and welcome back to another episode of Life in Prison. As always, my name is Zach. For the ones who are new and do not know, unfortunately, I spent five years of my life in maximum security prison, West Virginia up at Mount Olive Correctional Complex and Huntsville Correctional Center. Since returning, I've went and received my medical degree and I'm currently working in an urgent care helping others who unfortunately cannot help themselves. So what I do on this channel is I pretty much tell my stories about being locked up in prison along with getting out. I also do video chat interviews with inmates still locked up in prison regardless of for murder, drug charges, robbery, just showing you a first hand look what it's actually like living life in prison. You can shoot guns, you can sell dope, you can steal things, but at the end of the day it's going to get you in 7 by 12 you ain't gonna like it. So the ones who have been following me, I've been posting a lot of shorts on my channel, non-prison related content. So I'm proud to announce that I am a new team rider for a fingerboard company called Squirrelnut. So I have a few different hobbies. I snowboard, skateboard, BMX, I like cars, and now I'm into fingerboarding. I've kind of been doing that for since about the late 90s when Tech Deck and stuff first came out. So. Clay, I greatly appreciate you bringing me on the team, and I hope that you guys enjoy some of the content. The shorts that I post is pretty much going to be anything and everything. Stuff that I do out in the life with me and my girl, fingerboard clips, all and in between. So I hope you guys sit back, relax, and enjoy all the content that I post on this channel. If you haven't already done it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification button so you'll be first informed when I upload. Today, what we're going to be talking about is why I lived in PC. So, as I've said in every single video, every prison is different than others. Some prisons have a PC protective custody section, some do not. The maximum security prisons that I was in, we did not have any type of protective custody programs at all anywhere. The only way that you would be able to be in protective custody, PC, was either if you went to the hole and you checked in, or you went to one pod specifically made for either rats, baby rapers, baby touchers, or check-ins. So, whenever you're in jail or in prison, if you are a sex offender, or you have a sex charge, a sex crime, if you beat on women and children, if you've ratted, if you've checked in, there's only so many places that you can go to live comfortably. Most of the time people check in, it's be either because they've got a messed up charge or because they ratted, right? Now, a few far in between, sometimes people check in just because, because they're scared something might happen to them is why they check in. In actuality, nothing's really going to happen to you. Now, every state is different. Some, some places go a little bit harder than others. Here in West Virginia, if you was a check in, you was pretty much in the hole, right? Now, there is one prison that pretty much does house a good majority of the big rapers and check-ins, and that would be Northern Regional Facility. Um, they have a jail portion, and then they have a prison section. Now, you got to think, when there is thousands upon thousands of individuals that's locked up in prison that has either sex charges or they're rats, there's only so many places where they can actually be housed. Like I said, the prisons I was at, there was really no housing for them. So first at Huttonsville, um, I lived up on the gang unit. It was B2. Now, how Huttonsville set up is it was pretty much looked like an H, right? You had north side, a crossover, and then south side, all right? So we were on south side. The gang unit was on south side. The hole was on north side. So it was literally, it looked like an H in between, all right? So B2 was actually over top. You had to go up eight flights of steps to get up to the game unit. It was literally an island off to itself. If you did not live on this pod or dorm, you literally could not get in. The CEOs that work this section know exactly who lives on this dorm. I've never seen too many people ever sneak on to B2 who did not live there. There was a few that have done it, but few far and in between. It was just that secured, right? So it just so happened that right underneath of us, down eight flights of stairs, where we had to pass was B1. Now B1 at the time, I do believe things were a little bit changed now, but back then, 2011, 2016, when I was locked up, B1 was a baby raper dorm. If you lived on that pod, something was wrong. Now there was a few guys, a few guys that didn't have any funny charges or anything weird going on with them. They did live on B1. Now. Reason being is because the only maximum security cell-wise at Huttonsville was either B1 or B2. 
That's where the maximum security side was. One cell or two cell individuals. All the other pods and dorms was either a dorm where there's like 60 open bunks or six man cells and then other two man cells. These were the places that if you were a, let me, how do you want to say it? If you were a, um, a high profile case pretty much, that's where you went at Huntsville or the hole. That's where all the creepos and sickos and nasty dudes end up living. Now, whenever you're living on a PC unit, most of the time there's going to be like-minded individuals around you, as in there's going to be a bunch of either baby raper touchers around you or a bunch of rats. Now, there have been killings on these baby raper dorms and rat dorms, these check-in dorms pretty much. Other rats getting tired of other rats or other baby rapers think that other baby rapers have messed up charges and people end up getting killed. It's crazy, it's weird, and I never understood why these individuals that have these messed up charges would ever judge other people. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you are the scum of the earth. Now, a lot of these dudes were actually getting extorted. It's funny because they were getting extorted by dudes who did not live on the same pod as them. We would extort a lot of these individuals, you know, just because we have to go past these this, this pod to get to ours. So, whenever you see that these dudes are getting money and going to the store, you just pull them up in the hallway whenever you see them down in education or down at the gym or down at the chow hall, wherever you might catch one of these dudes. Just tell them, like, look, you better have that bag ready every Wednesday. Whenever you go to the store, you better have that bag ready or we will come up in that pod and mess you up. Knowing we will never be able to get in that pod, but they don't know that. They're scared half to death. Now, up in Mount Olive, it was a little bit different. Now, their hole was a lot bigger, but you got to think, when you have all these child molesters and baby rapers that have these diaper snipers, that have these crazy thousand-year sentences, they're all on the, on the yard. Literally, the dude that's sitting in the cell beside you has an 800-year sentence for messing with his own kids type stuff. That's how Mount Olive is. This is the top of the top. Mount Olive is the end of the road for anybody that's ever getting time in West Virginia. If you're never going home, that's where you're going. So a lot of these dudes have massive charges. So you gotta think, you've got killers who have multiple bodies around baby rapers and titty toddlers who also have multiple bodies. You get what I'm saying? It's not a good mix. Honestly, I kind of feel like it's set up for a reason because everyone that's getting killed most of the time are these baby rapers. Now, even up at Mount Olive, they do not have programs for these type of individuals. Now, they do have sex offender programs, but that only does so much. At the end of the day, people say it's a disease. It's not a disease. It is just disgusting stuff. Because you got to think, there's so many older, willing individuals wanting to give it up, why would you take it from somebody that's innocent? We do not ever, ever associate ourselves with anybody with those types of charges. The only time we're going to associate ourselves with people like that is if we're extorting them. Other than that, we have no reason to be around these types of guys. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these prisons, they put them in specific places because people will get a hold of them. There's been a few missions that we've went on where there was a few of us that needed to get onto these, how could you say, these baby raper dorms to get at somebody. Sometimes you can't get a hold of them. The only way you can actually get to them is living in the same section as them. So there have been individuals that had to go undercover, right, live there for a few weeks, a few months, just to get close enough to these dudes to then follow through with whatever mission that they were supposed to go on. Do you get what I'm saying? A lot of people don't agree with people taking advantage of individuals and stuff like that, but you got to think, man. In prison, you're going to have individuals that don't have money, that don't get stuff sent in, that doesn't have nothing. Well, by any means necessary, they're going to get it somehow. So, who's the best person to get it from? Someone that's absolutely no good. So, if you're a rat, if you testified, if you're an informant, if you have messed up charges, you are public enemy number one. The majority of these guys that have these messed up charges actually got sent in a lot of money from home. Like their family and friends really messed with them. So a lot of these dudes had thousands of dollars on their books. So we're going to need that. Keep pushing positivity. Find yourself a hobby. 
Be yourself. If you enjoy something, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of it because you've got one life to live and at the end of the day, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Find a hobby, enjoy it, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. Today was a short video on pretty much living on a PC pot in prison. What'll happen? Who knows? I hope you never get locked up to find out though. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification button so you'll be first informed when I upload. As always guys, I send my utmost love, Lord, to respect. Keep pushing positivity. I hope you guys come back for more. We gone.